You can always count on success ruining a good thing. And in the board gaming industry, it's it's just been a standard, not even a standard, above and beyond a standard, just an unwritten rule. A contract between gamers that if, if you purchased a product from a manufacturer and it was missing pieces or something was damaged inside the box, it would be replaced. Maybe you'd fill out a form, maybe you'd call a number, it might take a little while, might be a couple of weeks, might be a month, but eventually you'd get your piece. You had confidence in knowing that if you acquired your titles, certain titles for your collection, they'd be okay opening up. And this was important, not only given the price of many board games, but the fact that for some of us out there in the gaming community, there's a couple of hurdles to jump through. There could be shipping costs, there's acquisition, some titles might be more challenging to find. There might only be one copy in your area and you grabbed it. So it's nice to know that you had some recourse to get it corrected if something was broken missing. Now, in my experience, there's been maybe one or two games that something was missing. I was missing a token sheet in one game and uh, one of the miniatures for Conan was missing like half the side. Obviously, the mold when it was snapped off or in the press, whatever it's going to be broke, those were replaced. It it wasn't even a question of now I have a, a game that is unplayable or worse, it's going to taunt me forever. But that's all changed. That's changed. Uh, This big gaming company, I was going to say monolithic entity that controls many other smaller game companies, some of them very well known like Fantasy Flight Games, has enacted a new policy. So now if your game is missing any pieces or there's a defect in the board in manufacturing, there's no forms to fill out. There's no going anywhere to take care of it. Now you go back to your point of sale and you have them correct it. You have them purchase you, give you a new game. Is that going to impact things? That shifts the burden. Now, obviously, if it's Amazon, um, assuming you actually get a legitimate game on Amazon and not a knockoff, if you purchase from Amazon, that, that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. It's an inconvenience. They'll print out a shipping tag, you ship it back, you get a new one, you're good to go. But for those of us that might buy purchase through a miniature market, right now in their terms of service, uh, they're switching it to where you go to the manufacturer. You know, that's the idea. You contact the manufacturer. Well, now am I going to contact miniature market and have them deal with it? What's going to happen then with the games that get returned? They're going to have to absorb the costs. They're going to have to deal with the time the labor, the packing, the shipping, the invoicing back to the manufacturer, to them, to me. It's like the ultimate the ultimate middle point of, of purchase. What about a small gaming store? What about your local gaming store that you're, you're supporting because it's amazing and you picked up that one copy of Time Stories and it's missing the four character pegs? What do you do? They only have one copy. So, okay, now they take it back, they send it, they have to incur those costs, they have to deal with those costs, and you're out a game in the meantime, if you're even able, capable of getting it back. So what the heck is is going on? What the heck is going on with this policy? My humble opinion is that uh, the board gaming industry has surpassed Dungeons & Dragons, has surpassed role-playing games. It's it's up there. It's interesting. D&D is a comparison. Dungeons and Dragons wasn't mainstream for a number of years. And then around 3.5, 3.x, like 2002, 2004, 5, it became more mainstream, more uh, forward facing. And now D&D is well known. Everybody plays D&D. Everybody openly plays D&D. It's a massive, massive moneymaker. Uh, board games did what D&D took to do in like one third of the time. Board gaming is mainstream. If it's sold in Barnes and Noble, it's mainstream. The fact that I can buy most board games, including stuff like X-Wing Miniatures and Barnes and Noble and other big booksellers and toy stores. Now that's great for the hobby. That's good. Brings in more players, pushes innovation, pushes products out. I mean, that's before we even get into Kickstarter and everything that Kickstarter's doing. That's all positive. But from the perspective of vulture capitalism, those are some corpses ripe to pick. So you acquire a bunch of companies, you package them under one monolithic umbrella, you start immediately laying off staff, 
reorganizing, which Fantasy Flight, who owns them? They're cutting back on in-house development. They're cutting back on customer support. They're cutting back on marketing. You, you cut back on the number one cost of people. They're also cutting back on the titles and the expansions. So they're um, increasing and saving money by not having to warehouse as much stuff, not having to print as much stuff. Now we have this policy by this big company that they're forcing the product, the defects in the products to be dealt with by the purchaser. That's further cutting costs. And, and if you think about it, I mean, just think of in your area, everybody that plays board games, part of your, your local community, now magnify that across the world. Th- these little cuts, um, these little adjustments, they're going to, it's like you make one change on the Excel sheet and, and just everything explodes and all of a sudden profitability is through the roof. I think it's getting ready for a bigger acquisition. I think things are heading in that direction. And certainly, it's not doom and gloom. It's not the death of board gaming. Uh, Board gaming is too big at this point, especially with Kickstarter and especially with what is going to come next, kind of like Kickstarter 2.0, although I wouldn't call it Kickstarter 2.0 because that would be insulting to Kickstarter. And they're kind of um, whacked out policies with many things in terms of actually protecting their creators and going after, excuse me, their backers instead of going after and protecting their creators at all costs and just taking no responsibility. I mean, that's that's a vlog for another time. But I, I suspect ultimately with board gaming, it's going to take a little bit, but we're seeing this in the miniature industry, print on demand, board games that have the ability to truly print titles on demand. And now you see these places that allow you to print the titles on demand and they ship them to you. When that happens, kind of Kickstarter 2.0, we'll be less reliant on this traditional distribution, this traditional plane of getting stuff out there. Uh, Certainly very, very interesting. And it seems like there's um, kind of some uproar here and there about that on Twitter and and on various forums and YouTube channels, but um, certainly not the outrage that it appears to be because it, it seems like a small adjustment. You might even say, hey, look, I bought a lot of titles and I've never had a problem. And if I did, it's only one. I'll get it taken care of. But again, these subtle shifts affect massive profitability and and make you look great. Make you look great on that Excel sheet, on that PowerPoint slide that's getting pushed out there ripe for acquisition. 